representative of America's Revolutionary Communist Party, thinks that political change is possible in the U.S. And he spoke to RT's Anastasia Cherkina. RT is sitting down with longtime American revolutionary and a representative of the Revolutionary Communist Party in America, Mr. Carl Dix. Sir, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. I'd like to get started with you explaining to us exactly what your party stands for. What our party stands for is revolution. And where we're coming from is that we think that this whole world is based on exploitation of the great majority of people by a handful of capitalist exploiters. This is the case all over the world. Nothing fundamentally good is going to happen for people unless and until that imperialist capitalist system is overthrown through revolution. And our party exists to mobilize not only working class people, but people from all walks of life who've got beefs, problems with this system. How many supporters do you have and how do you see a revolution taking place in America? Do you think the majority of Americans would support this idea? can't give you an exact number. We don't have anywhere near enough people to do what would be needed to carry out a revolution, but we're reaching out and working every day to bring that forward by spreading the message of revolution, that the system is worthless and revolution is the solution. Right now, nowhere near the majority of people in this country would support a revolution. In fact, it would be a small minority at this point. The thing is, though, that the very way the capitalist system operates is based upon exploiting and abusing people. And we work to bring out to people that those abuses that they hate stem from the very nature of the system. And it's going to be through that and through countering the lies that people are told about revolution and communism here in this country that we think we can bring forward a revolutionary people numbering in the millions and then millions more beyond that who would support the kind of change that the revolution would be talking about. How could communism or even socialism ever really work in America? Because at this point, America and communism seem like completely opposite terms. Well, that's something that's really got to be worked at and changed. People have been told lies about communism and socialism. You've got these teabaggers saying they think Barack Obama is a socialist and a communist. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Obama is trying to save the capitalist system and doing what he thinks is necessary to do that. He's no revolutionary, no socialist, and no communist. And as a communist, I feel I can speak with authority on that. What kind of economic system would you build? And how would you handle the aftermath of an economic crisis such as one that we have just seen in the United States? Well, the kind of economic system would be fundamentally based upon taking the ownership, control, and domination of the economy, not only in this country, but around the world, from the handful of imperialist capitalists the major ones who are based here in the United States and making that ability to produce what's needed for people to survive common or collective property. And that would totally transform the world because right now 25,000 people die every day from diseases that could be easily prevented, treated, or cured. The only reason that doesn't happen it's because there's no profit in saving those lives. What would be instituted would be socialism as a transition stage to a full communist, classless society. What about how you would deal with a crisis like this? What, would, what steps would you take and what would you recommend to Obama to do right now to be able to fix what's going on in the country? Obama's problem is he's trying to save the capitalist system. And if you're trying to save the capitalist system, the problems that people are up against in this crisis can't be dealt with and in fact will be intensified. That's why the housing crisis has not eased out for the people who are losing their homes, although the banks have been bailed out. Because that's what capitalism works on. It works on the concentration of wealth and power. So it isn't so much what we would suggest to Obama, but what a revolutionary society would do is it would take the productive capacity of society and divert that from production of profit for a handful of people and gear it towards producing what the majority of people here in this country and around the world need to survive. And we also get people to try to look at the world, which is another problem here in this country. People don't look at the world and how the world is being abused by their government in their name. They actually accept a lot of lies and distortions about what's going on around the world. That's something else that we have to break through. 
How much time do you think it would take for the political and economic system to fundamentally change in America? Time isn't the crucial question. The crucial question is how do you transform people's understanding? That's not something that's going to happen at once overnight, but when you look at the problems that this system puts people up against, the prospect of drastic change is something that is up for people, and the question is, will it be in a good direction or a bad direction? At one point in your life, you uh, refused to deploy to Vietnam, and as a result, spent two years in prison. What would you say now to young men who are sacrificing their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan? What I do say to young people, whether they're in the military or not in the military, is that you have to look at what these wars are really about. Because when I got drafted into the U.S. military in the 1960s, I had no idea what Vietnam was about, but I had a sense that I was being lied to by the government. I talked to other GIs who had been there. I asked them what had been going down, what had they been doing. Was it truly the case that the people in Vietnam didn't like the U.S. GIs and why? And I understood from that that these wars were not to help the people in those countries, but actually to help the capitalist imperialist here in the U.S. continue to dominate those countries. And that's why people opposed it. And that's how I came to the point where I decided I had to refuse to go to Vietnam. And I tell youth today, whether they're in the military or not, you got to look at what you're doing and why you're doing it. And if you believe you're over there trying to help people in Iraq and Afghanistan, you have been sold a bill of goods. Look at the way this war is fought. Drone missiles destroying whole villages. Airstrikes called in on wedding parties in Afghanistan. That's not something aimed at helping people, and those are not isolated mistakes. It happens all the time. And a war like that is only fought in the interest of control and domination, not to spread democracy or provide security, either for people in Afghanistan or people in this country. And I say to them, if I had to do it again, I would refuse again, because I'm not going to be part of raining death and destruction on people in the interest of a handful of rich exploiters. What do you think Obama should do today about the war in Afghanistan? Well, what should be done about that is that the U.S. needs to get out of Afghanistan. The U.S. is in Afghanistan not to provide security for people here in the U.S. or bring democracy to Afghanistan. I mean, let's just get real about it. A plan to overthrow the Taliban government in Afghanistan was put on George Bush's desk September 10, 2001 by Condoleezza Rice. This is not me saying it. This is what Bob Woodward said based upon his interviews of many people in the Bush administration. The day before September 11th, they had a plan to overthrow the Taliban government. September 11th happens, and then they tell you, we have to take, deal with this government because of September 11th. Just like the war in Iraq, this is a war that is based upon domination and control and should not be fought and should not be supported. So what the U.S. should do is pull out now. Obama cannot pull out because he is trying to save an imperialist capitalist system. And if you're an imperialist and you start pulling out of countries where you're fighting wars, you then send a message to other countries that your domination is vulnerable. And that's why he's already sent tens of thousands of more troops to Afghanistan and will, in the end, decide to send tens of thousands more, because that control and domination of the Middle East, a strategic and resourceful, resource-filled region, is too important for the U.S. global empire. You're also a very outspoken critic and activist against police brutality in America. How bad is the situation? Is the police really out of control? There is a nationwide epidemic of police brutality and even police murder. Far from being isolated incidents or, you know, things carried out by rogue elements in the police force, this is the role the police are supposed to play. I mean, here in New York City, the police stop and frisk almost 2,000 people a day. The reasons that they do it, and this is what they say about it, are someone was wearing clothing that was inappropriate someone was in a high crime area, which means almost anywhere in the black and Latino communities.